jacket sleeve is wide enough to hold that uh, down, you're, you don't want to do it. Okay. Now, the width of the tie, I heard when I said this earlier, ties are wider, narrower, there's skinny ties out there, there's all that going on, yes? Why are these all the different widths of ties? Did you read your handouts? You can see this online now because it was never there and your salespeople don't know this either, okay. This is a uniform and I'm going to break it down for you in about a minute or two, okay. So this is a uniform. This is called the notch in the lapel, right there. That's the notch in the lapel, okay. And I'm going to take from this point and I'm going to go straight across as a measurement, yes? Okay. It always equals the widest part of your tie right down here. That's the widest part of the tie. So the widest part of the tie always equals what? the widest part of the lapel on your jacket. Now be careful, don't get into your closet and pull out an old suit you have, your brother, uncle, or cousin gave it to you, and it's got a four inch wide lapel on it, and you heard skinny ties are in, so you team it up with your skinny tie. Do you know what you did? You moved your ribbons. This is a regulation and a specification to this suit. Anytime you put on a suit, it's got a four inch wide lapel on it, what are you gonna put with it? Four inch wide tie, got it? Now, you can wear the skinny tie anytime you want as long as you're not wearing a jacket. Do you get it? Because this is the correlation between how that goes together. All right, so we got that one. Let me move fast so we don't lose time. I just want to show you all the accruedments. What do you think of when I say braces or suspenders or something like that? <laughs> Pee Wee Herman? Okay. Yeah, a few others. Okay, this was created for a certain purpose, okay? And they're called braces. It's a British term for suspenders, okay? It's a British term for suspenders. Why were these created? Because all men's, men's dress pants, now remember, clothing manufacturers have to make assumptions about you to create clothing. One of their assumptions is, is that you are higher in your back than you are in your front. And so by an inch and a half, I'm looking for my tape measure, and I don't even, my, my tape measurement, measurement. Not here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So if I took my tape measurement and took a measurement from the back of your pants to the floor and from the front of your pants to the floor, I'm going to have an inch and a half difference. I'm going to be higher in the back. All pants for men are made that way. Now, if you do not hold this on your body in this inch and a half tilt, you will not have a nice crease down the front and down the back like the mannequin. If you're lower to the back, not higher, what's going to happen to the back of your pants? That can happen to women too. Okay, if we have lower, I'm a little lower to my back. Okay, this gets all messy, the seat looks sloppy, okay. So what we can do as an alterations person is what we call lower the waistband. So you're not up here, I'm gonna cut this down. Most men are equal, not quite down here, more equal and not quite inch and a half. So what we do is we cut them straight across where he is and then we pull up that extra fabric and now see, I've got a nice crease down the front and down the back. And you are gonna ask to have your seat shaped, okay. Some seats are high, some are low, some are full, some are flat. We're not all the same. So we lower the waistband, we shape the seat. Now, here's the problem. What if you're more than the inch and a half tilt in the front? Not that you have a gut going on, but you're more than the inch and a half here. What happens to the front of your pants? Does that look very good? No, it's all blown out and you know, the crease is all crumpled. Now, here's the dilemma of, this, of the alterations person. It's very easy to uh, lower the waistband in the back, but it's very rare that we ever lower the waistband in the front for a man because by the time we're done, you will end up with about a three inch zipper and I don't know how well that's gonna work. So we don't ever cut down the front of a man's pant. What we're gonna tell you to do is put those pants back on in that inch and a half tilt and you're gonna wear what to support them? Braces, braces suspend the pant in the inch and a half tilt. That's what these were made for. And if you wear them, we're, uh, usually use the color of your suit so it kind of, you know, it kind of coordinates. You don't want to get all patterns. Now you got to deal with your shirt pattern, your tie pattern, uh, keep it that way. And this will always be, um, it, it doesn't stretch. See, you're going to have a little piece of gib in the back, but it shouldn't all be stretched or it defeats the purpose and you better have the pigskin leather. And if you do wear uh, the braces, your pants have to tell you, yes, you can. Do you see that continental waistband? It's extended. That's a finished look when you button it off. You, you leave the belt loops on, but you do not wear a belt and braces because you just defeated the purpose of suspending the pants. So that's what this was created for. Okay, not your grandpa. Now, these pictures both came out of GQ, same issue. Curve toe, angle toe, whichever you like better. Wingtip shoes only go with a suit, okay? So I don't always encourage men to buy wingtip because it stays with the suit. It doesn't go with anything else you have in your wardrobe, understand? It's reserved 
for a suit. But you can wear the cap toe, you can wear blucher style, you can wear bicycle style. Your socks, okay, these come up to your knee, cover your calf, so when you cross your legs, what don't I want to see? Skin or hairy legs, so we want the longer sock. When you're buying your belt, look for um, your size, but what you're trying to do, most dress belts have five holes, you want to hit the middle hole. That's the correct sizing of a dress belt. Gives you enough leather to get in the keeper, not too much leather. It's hanging out the side. And your shoes should be comfortable, okay? Don't let them say they'll break in, okay? So maybe you don't want to go and get the leather bottoms. That's not comfortable. Get a nice dress shoe and have it rubberized or whatever and a lot of cushioning in it. You want to have comfortable feet when, you know, when you're standing all the time. But good leather upgirds. And, and you'll find really good shoes by all the top brand names. Uh, this would go with a sport coat or blazer. Uh, this would be more of a casual shoe. So you don't want to mix those up according to that. Women, we could wear all the, oh, no, we could, but the only sensible one is just a boring pump when you have on a basic suit. You don't want the tension on your feet. You know, if we're doing social things, things like that, you, we can do that. Do a little bit, but we don't always want it. And one other quick thing for the woman, see the one with the strap over there and the chunky heel? The chunkier the heel, the heavier your calf looks. See the black shoe on top with the strap? The narrower the heel, the more trim your calf or your leg appears. That's just one thing I can tell you, okay? So the white shoe would be the best, but you wouldn't wear a white shoe unless you're wearing a white suit, which you probably wouldn't be wearing. So all of those go together. There's the French cuff shirt. Now you can see it. Basic watches do not wear, and I see this all the time with the men, you know, the, um, the Velcro closure or the plastic watch and your heart rate when you're jogging and all that, you need to slip that in your pocket of your suit. Do not wear that when you have your suit on. You don't have to buy another watch, just don't wear it uh, with that, okay? Women, again, go real basic with your watches. Okay, business casual, we mix and match pieces. This is what makes it business casual. They don't match, a suit matches. You could do things like this too, uh, probably not the shoes over there, although when you wanna be real fashionable, that would be fun. I don't think I could walk in those. Some people can, yes, some can do that. Uh, and if you have a tight budget, then just kind of stay with be basic pieces and switch your accessories and your blouses and things like that, and you can make clothing look different. Be careful again, and uh, again, the contrast of dark to light, black or blue with uh, cream or white, those seem to be a very um, classic, traditional kind of a thing. But notice how soft that one is on the right. That would be in a softer, more feminine you know, situation, whereas here, I would uh, wear this or choose this on a tight budget because I could utilize it a little bit more uh, in switch pieces. Don't do the man on the right over there, okay? So that would be business casual where, and in wintertime, you, mix, you can mix pieces up. Be careful about wearing jeans in most of your environments. Make sure that's clear. Don't ever put on jeans unless that's been clear. And again, they are not your most comfortable jeans that you have at home that you walk the dog with and wash your car with. They should be relatively new and, you know, in good condition, uh, all that. Uh, in the summertime, we wear lighter colors. Not uh, that's more. You could still wear dark colors in the summer because, as a female, couldn't I wear a black linen suit? It's the fabric; it is not the color. That's important. Okay. So we and we wear white woolen in the wintertime. Slip-on shoes for business casual. I'm trying to get to something. Yeah, you could do something like that. It's, again, it's black and white that kind of uh, um, gives you a little bit more classic look. But be careful of wearing like the capris or the shorts or things like that. Uh, Depends what your environment, clear those dress codes so you dress appropriately uh, in the right things, okay? Too much color. Uh, notice that I put collar blouses on them in most situations. Notice which one draws your attention is the pattern one, okay? Harder to look at someone there. Uh, this would be strictly, uh, with the leather, that's strictly casual again dressing. I'm gonna skip through some of these and have your shoes. Men, if you have a leather jacket or a suede jacket, you, do, you cannot make it business casual. It stays casual, okay? The fabric alone. Now, if I were saying, uh, somebody told me to come in a casual situation in an office setting, I would not come in in the polo shirt and the dockers. I would come in in a long sleeve dress shirt and dress pants because it's more respectful and I hold my rank. Your rank comes down when you dress over here, especially if it's worn out or sloppy or something like that. Uh, gentleman in the aqua blue shirt, aqua green blue shirt, yes, right there. Yes, he sees me stand up. Let him see your nice dress shirt there, nice pair of dress pants. He's being very respectful to me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Give him a hand. Okay. All right. And then the shoes with cornet. This is nightclubbing. 
I want to get through some. Here's what I want to get to. Okay, clothing manufacturers have to make assumptions about you in order to create clothing, all right? So you either have that athletic body with the broad shoulders and the trimmer body, uh, trimmer midriff section, or you're linear, so men fall through here. Uh, the one over there is what I call the more football player, and that suit model used to be called portly. We don't call that portly anymore. Okay, so now you have these different body types. Now, just like I told you, the different shirts are created certain ways, you're going to have the same thing with the suits when you go out there. So I want you to make sure that you're picking the right one. Can you open your handouts, gentlemen, to this woman? Look at the body types across the top there. Can you open that to your handout? Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't know where that came from. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to ask this gentleman in the orange shirt, because he's wearing orange. That makes me think that he's very outgoing. So I'm going to ask him if he doesn't mind being my model. Would, can I encourage you up here at your first name? Charles. Charles. Charles is going to come up. Okay. Oh, I didn't see your slide. Charles you, don't, Charles, you don't mind if I touch you for demonstration purposes? Okay. If you don't like it, just slap my hand. Okay. All right. So, men, you all open this sheet up. If you'll notice under the first body type, it says uh, drop 7 to 10. Do you see it? The next body says drop 6. Last body drop, uh, drop is 4. Yes? What does that mean? All suits are sized from your chest, okay? So if you buy them, these numbers are in my head, so I'm going to use it. So if he was 40 chested, that first model of suit drops 7 to 10 inches, meaning that's your waist size. The drop is your waist size. So subtract 7 to 10 from 40. What's the pant waist on this suit now? Between 30 and 33. Got it? Okay, now look at the next one. The drop is what? 6 inches. Now what's the waist on that 40 chested suit? 34. Now look at the last one. The drop is 4 inches on a 40 chested suit. Now what's the waist? 36. So if you're 30 wasted, are you going to buy this suit that has a drop of 4 inches? Do you think that I can take that extra, those 6 inches or more, into your pant? I can't take them in that much. I can cut them all apart, sew them together smaller. Uh, that'll be $45, please, or maybe even $60 now, okay, to cut those pants small. Why should he have to do that? Well, a salesman might say, well, you know, you don't like that. Okay, I can give you the 40 chested suit, and I can give you the pants. They're called separate. So I'm going to give you the 40 chest, and I'm going to give you the 30 waisted pants. Subtract 6 inches from 40. What is that? 34? That's what this jacket waist is made for. Can I take four inches in in your jacket? No. What's going to happen if I try to take four inches in your jacket? Where are your pockets going to end up? Do you understand? Are you following me? You need to pick the right model suit so we don't have to do much alteration. You're getting this, yes? Those, that's what you're going to face. So you need to know those drops. And they're marked on the suit. You will see it. This is one measurement that's not marked on the suit. And it's called the overarm measurement. And this is the one that's going to give you the most trouble. This is taken right here, your overarm measurement. I'm going to give you your measurements since you up here have my model, but I'm not going to tell them what they are, okay? Can you remember these? 49. <laughs> and 41, 40 and a half or 41, okay? Okay, so here's what. Look at the first one. Remember the one, the drop was 7 to 10. What is the overarm measurement? What does it say? 7 to 10 overarm? Okay, so if you're 40 chested, this overarm can accommodate 7 to 10 inches more, meaning this overarm can be accommodate a measurement of 47, 48, 49, or 50. Yes? Okay. Look at the middle one and the last one. They both say what? Overarm measurement of what? 5 inches. So on a 40-chested suit, this overarm can only accommodate what? 45 inches, maybe 46. But once you hit 47, 48, 49, 50, you're not getting in that suit, are you? You're not getting in that jacket. Okay, so the salesman says, well, wait a minute, I, you're 40 chested, but you can't get your shoulders and arms in there, so let me jump you up to a 42 or 44 now so we can get your shoulders and arms in there. Subtract 6 inches from 44, now what's the waist on that suit? 38. Am I going to take 8 inches in your pants? Are you all following me? You've got to find these right increments so that you're wearing the right model of suit. Now, gentlemen, you want to take your waist measurement, and I'm going to tell them what his is. Quietly. No. I'm going to tell what his is. This is not what he buys in pants, okay? But this is what he measures out because that's what I'm going to use, okay? So what you do is you start with your chest size and then you subtract it from your overarm. If your overarm measurement is five to six inches more, you're going to fit in just about every, every suit. 
but once it hits seven, eight, nine inches more than your chest size, you know, need to go into what we call, what kind of suit? The more trim suit. But it was originally called athletic. Joseph A. Bank calls it tailored. But most of the other stores are going to call it the trim fit. Got it? If you get into the slim suit, what is it going to be? It's all shrunk down. You know, it's again, it's sprayed on your body, so we don't want to do that. Okay? So that's what you're going to be looking for when you go shopping. Did that give you some ideas? Okay, give them a hand. Let me do this. Um, I have a gentleman, I think the, the uh, significant other wear, is wearing a red blouse. He's wearing a white shirt. He's got his eyeglasses sitting on the top of his head. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. Do you mind being my model? Okay. Now, we need to end up, but it's uh, 154. What time, Lisa, did we get out of here? Oh, we're out at three. A two is sticking in my mind. I don't know why two stuck in my head. And I said, can't possibly. I'm talking as fast as I can. Okay. All right. So, oh, it is Tony. All right. Tony, you don't mind if I touch for demonstration purposes? Knock can I clear out. that with your significant other there? <laughs> it's okay to touch? Okay. All right. So, a couple other things that we're going to uh, look at here. I'm going to put, nobody wore a suit. I, I didn't know if anybody came in late. Anybody have on a jacket, suit? No. Nope. All right. Okay. So, I'm going to have them put this on. Let's see. Oh. Mm. Okay, there's a reason why I have to go one or the other. Or is it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, this is the right one. Okay, let's go. Oops, I dropped it. It might fit you. This is, I think, a 42 regular. Okay. All right. Now, gentlemen and women, I'll do the counter as I'm doing this, okay? The counter for the women versus the man. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's okay. They won't be important. Well, kind of will after a little while. Okay. Gentlemen, you wear a two or three button model. That is the business suit out there. Okay. Women, how many buttons do we have on our suits? One, two, five, ten, fifteen. Zip it up, clip it over, no buttons. <laughs> Zip it do you know, you have, We don't have any standard closure. You got it? All right. But men, it's two or three buttons. That is the business suit. No more buttons, no fewer buttons. We want two or three. And Recently, the designers are saying everybody looks good in a two-button suit. I don't agree with that from my standpoint of alterations. A gentleman in the aqua blue shirt right there. Do you mind standing up for me? Just you can stay right there. Mm -hmm. And could you do me a favor? Okay. Throw that chest out. Give me everything you've got and then suck it in here. Okay, you see all that volume in his chest? They don't make suits for that. Give him a hand. Nice chest. <laughs> nice chest over there. Okay. Now. The soon as you have curvature to the chest in here and you come down and you button off a two-button model, what is your jacket going to do? It's going to pop up because it's got to get over the curvature of your chest. So it's better to go on a three-button model. Why? I don't have to get over this curvature and this will lay cleaner. Remember, it's more important how this fits you, not how much you spend. Yes? Okay. So that's the important issue there. There was one picture in there. I need to go back. I think I, I didn't show it. All right. So two or three button model. Uh, another reason you would wear a three button model. Armani said 90% of the male population in the United States is pitch forward in the shoulders. Now I'm going to have Tony. I, I'm going to have Tony pitch forward in the shoulder. As he pitches, what's happening to the bottom of the jacket? It's opening like the fashion suit, right? He doesn't want to show that off. Okay, so what we're doing, maybe he does. Okay, so <laughs> what we want to do is we want to keep this jacket closed the way it was created and the way it's supposed to be. And if he's pitching like that, this is going to go open. If he only has a two-button model on and I only button this one, this acts as a pivot and still what? Allows it to pull open, right? But if I can put him in this three-button model, what do I have a better chance of doing? We're not going to button that one, okay? I've got a better, that's an extreme. But you have a better chance of closing it over. Do you understand? So we'll go to a three-button model, what? Volume in the chest or your pitch forward in the shoulder, okay? Women, if you're a G-body type, if you're looking at your handouts, if you're a G-body type, you are naturally pitch forward in the shoulders. So you've got to have a lot more buttons, otherwise your jacket pulls open. And your jacket's going to pull open because another reason, you have those nice curvy hips and that endowed buttocks. And so this always pulls open if you don't get enough buttons up here or to, for your jacket to flare around the body. Okay, so let's go over here and look at the buttoning of the jacket. It is always buttoned. It is some, I'm sorry, it's sometimes buttonless 
again, sometimes because depending on your curvature of chest, uh, you, this might pop up a little if you pin it, you know, if you button it, it'll stay cleaner. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd have to look at you and see what I would consider what's a better, a cleaner look. So it's sometimes button it, always button, and then it's never, ever, ever, don't you dare button the bottom button. Okay, so we don't want to button that. What did people tell you why? People told you not to do it, right? Did anybody tell you not to do it? Did they tell you why? I heard something. Tell me. Okay, we're getting close. Okay. We're going to go to England. Okay, now what I'm going to tell you first is fashion is very quirky. Somebody can bring fashion in like this. Somebody can take it out like that. We don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know who's going to do it. We don't know how long it's going to last. Okay, so we're going to England. King Edward VII and King Henry VIII were very rotundous kings. I'm talking about huge kings. Okay, why were they huge? Because they would gorge themselves. Why? Because they could. They would eat as much as they could, and they kept growing and growing and growing. So when they put on their jackets, what could they not do now? They couldn't get their arms around their body to button the bottom button on their jacket. So to respectful the king, what did everybody in the court do? Left it undone. And he was the trendsetter, and they thought that was a new look. So everybody left their button undone. And what are you doing hundreds of years later? You are still respecting the king of England. Now, don't tell the president that, because I think if he finds out, he may start buttoning this one. I, I hate telling military men this story, because it's like, wait a minute. Uh, we had a revolution, and I'm pretty sure we won that war. Why are we still respecting the king? It only has to do with fashion. Do you get it? It has nothing to do with how we feel about each country. Yes? You're OK with it? Yeah. All right, so OK. So, so the only reason you don't button. So women, we don't have to do this. You know why? We weren't allowed in the courts, and if we were there, we weren't wearing suits. We were wearing dresses, OK? So we didn't have to deal with this buttoning. Uh, going on. All right, so you all comfortable with that? Okay. At this button, I want to pull away from your body no more than three inches. My fingers are three inches. I want to pull three inches. He's right about there. If I pull more than three inches, this is going to look sloppy. If I can't pull that three inches, your jacket's going to look like this. Do you get it? So that's the correct sizing. Now, in some cases, you might end up having to wear protective vest, or if you're carrying anything on your body, then you might want to pull a little more than the three inches. Do you understand what I'm saying? because otherwise it'll bulge on your jacket. So you can go a little bit looser, and we can always take it in uh, later on when you're done carrying equipment or wearing a protective vest. All right, so women, we don't use this rule. Because you can have shape to your jacket. It doesn't have to be tight on you, but it can have shape, right, and movement. But you just want to create that illusion. Now, if you've got, uh, if you're G-tight, uh, you have curvy hips, and you're endowed back here, you want your jackets to skirt out like this. Do you see where there's a lot of, uh, Open, yeah, so it can lay around those nice shapely hips. I don't have any hips. I wish, yeah. So I tried to create the illusion. All right, so here, that's, this is how this is going to fit. Next thing you want to look at, both male and female, when you're putting on jackets, okay? Just look out straight at the audience. This should hang parallel to itself. Do you see that? Jacket hanging parallel to itself. All right, remember I said if it starts doing this, we go to the three-button model, right? And that's how we can, we can fix it. And the next thing we're going to look at, does the button and the hole line up? Now, it looks like his button and his hole line up. Can you see that? If I buttoned it, it would be right in alignment. OK. Can you do me a favor? Can you drop one shoulder just a little bit more than the other? A little bit more. I'll have to force it. OK. All right, here we go. We're do now we're very exaggerated. Here's the buttonhole, and here's the button. Are they anywhere in alignment? No. Do not allow the alterations person to move the button to put it in alignment. What do you think the bottom of your jacket's going to be? You, you see how that's off? It might not be that exaggerated, but it will be off. The correct alteration is to what? We put a shoulder pad right here, and we bring it into alignment. That is the correct alteration, because more than likely, you have one drop shoulder. I see you all carrying your, your bags and your backpacks and stuff. When we put a suit on, we're not going to wear that bag, right? You're going to get a man bag? Yeah? <laughs> not that canvas uh, camouflage with your suit, so be careful. OK. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Calvin Klein does some nice man bags, OK. All right, so that's a, women, the same thing. We can have one shoulder. We carry that purse. What do we do? We, got, we put so much stuff in it, <laughs> over time, your shoulder kind of drops. So you can be off a little. And you'll notice it, too, if you have one shoulder lower, because if you button the jacket, one side will usually pop a little bit. Whichever pops, it's the lower shoulder, OK? So you might recognize that, too. All right, so it's going to round parallel. We're going to do that. So we can either button here. Now, the length of the sleeve here. Dude, this fits me pretty well. Yeah. OK, so here's what. As a tailor, I usually measure off your thumb to get the length of the sleeve. Now, this is both for male and female when we're wearing a suit. Okay? The length of the jacket, it should rest on this bone right here. Can you see that, his hand bone? You all? With his arm down. 
I wanted to rest there. So I wanted to, I don't want to be short of it. I want to hit there and maybe crunch just a little bit on top of it. You're going to feel it in the palm of your hand, right where that wrinkle is on your wrist. Now your shirt sleeve, thank you for pulling that down, should show about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And there's a reason and a purpose for the shirt to show. It takes the dirt, the moisture, the perspiration off your body, goes on the sh shirt, you send it to laundry, what do you protect? The jacket, do you get it? The same thing while your shirt collar shows above the jacket here. It's also taking the dirt, the moisture, the perspiration, and we send it to laundry. So it's a protective. Now your first barrier protection would be that what he's got on here, the white crew neck style t-shirt. Do not wear the V or the tank top because a lot of times white dress shirt fabric, you can see through it. So I'm seeing your underwear. So the best thing is to wear a white crew neck style when you're wearing a dress shirt, okay? So I'm gonna do that. So that would be the first barrier protection, your t-shirt, then the shirt, and then hopefully it doesn't get to the suit, uh, the perspiration, the moisture, um, et cetera. But if you do get perspiration in your suit, you can do what uh, President Bush's valet told me. He had told me when the president was done with his wearing his suit, he would turn him inside out like this. He would put it on the hanger inside out, and he would spray it down completely with Febreze fabric freshener. Now you can use ozone, O-Z-O-N-E. You can use Odaban. I think those two are in like, and you probably all go there, uh, Home Depot. You can buy those products in there too, okay? If you don't, because there's a little fragrance in, in this. The others don't have a fragrance. So, and then you spray it down completely. Now you gotta turn it inside out because it's gonna get really wet. Do it at night, I'll do it at night. Hang it up, by morning it's dry. Women, you can turn your skirts inside out, spray them down from, on the inside. Men, your pants, you can do the same thing. So now this doesn't have to go to the dry cleaner because it has body odor or cigar smoke on it or fried food you know, odor into it. That will take it out. They now do these in uh, small spray size to carry on the plane. I always take mine when I travel. Just I never know where I'm going to get in a situation or it's hot or humid and I'm stuck. So that does work really well. Okay, So that's another product uh, that we can use. Okay, where's my tape measure? Follow me around. There it is. Don't let me get lost. Okay, women, uh, it's the same length. Uh, we do the same thing. We don't have to show our sleeves because we wear more disposable clothing, yeah? This is in my closet one or two years. It's out of there. I'm going to buy something new. I don't necessarily have to protect it, but we can if we want to. And women, remember those uh, blouses I showed you, uh, J.C. Penney's Worthington line, the nice long sleeves on them. I got extra long arms. So they come out with a really long sleeve. So this is something that we can do. You really buttoned that. Okay, all right. So what we can do is if we have a nice long sleeve, we can do this effect. Have you seen that? That's a very sharp look for a woman. A man doesn't get to do that. So with your business suit, you could do that, all right? So that's that little extra. Now, a lot of times, men, you'll notice there's two buttons here. Okay, what's the reason for that? Well, I call that cheating. But the reason for the two buttons is if, you know, if you buy it, it says 32, 33 sleeve. Okay, if you put it on the tighter button, it's what? 32. You put it on the 33, if you, you, to get to the 33, you put it on the looser button because it slides down more. So do you see how you can control this? So even if you don't have two buttons, if you, I would rather you went a little longer than too short and then just control the button here. It won't go past your hand there. It can't get past this bone. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not gonna go way down here. Um, and you can do that by adjusting uh, the button. Let me show you the, the uh, shirt measurement because I showed you the overarm, the chest, the waist measurement. Uh, when they measure you for a shirt, you wanna come down on the base of the neck down in here, so he looks like he's 17. Well, that's a nice strong neck. I didn't expect that. Okay, that's 17 right there. Okay, he's scaring me over here. All right, we're going to, I'm gonna check your bicep now. Okay, um, I won't tell you what this is. Okay, it's all suit. Suit jackets are only made to accommodate a 16 inch bicep. So if you gentlemen go over that 16 inches, you're gonna be using all of this fabric. And then you're like, I can't move in this. Well, sure, you used all this fabric and you're using it in your back, so there's no way you know, that's gonna work. So check your biceps. All right, here we go. Center of the back, center here. I'm gonna go down his arm, I'm gonna come down. Uh, sometimes they ask you to bend. I don't like to bend the elbow. I like to come down and find that little round bone. bone. Y'all have it. Some are more prominent than others, so you gotta kind of feel for it. I'm gonna come to that bone, and I'm gonna add an inch, so 33, in order to get that. So, but, but you might even fit, fit in a 16 and a half, 34, you might hit in a 17 and a half, do you know what I mean? That's, that's your size, but every shirt manufacturer is a little bit different. And then you wanna buy the what fit? 
Trim fit, trim fit, okay. Now, let's break this suit down a little bit more. From the end of the sleeve to that button, this is a uniform. That should measure an inch and a quarter, okay? I should measure an inch and a quarter. Why am I telling you this? Number one, it's a uniform, it's an inch and a quarter, because he may need this shortened a half an inch, and what do you think your tailor might do, your alterations person? <laughs> they're not going to care, they're going to get lazy, right, and they're just going to shorten this up here and take it up, and now what? It's, the button's right on the edge of the jacket. I brought uh, people up from my audience where I've actually seen the jacket shortened with all the buttons underneath. Now, I think you'd catch that, right? It's like, this doesn't look right, but you might not catch the fact that it's only a half or a quarter inch different than it should be. No, the correct alteration is to remove all these buttons, replicate that placket, move that placket way up here, shorten the jacket, sew the buttons back on, and put them on what? Inch and a quarter from the bottom. How many of you have seen the kissing buttons where they overlap? Anybody? Nobody's been shopping for men's suits? Okay, they'll be overlapping like this. It's just to get your attention, they're called kissing buttons. Calvin Klein and uh, I think um, Tommy Hilfiger does that, and uh, Ralph Lauren. Okay, there's a few that do that, just to get your attention. Okay, now we're gonna look at the length of the jacket. So women, we do the same sleeve length. We have different button enclosure. We don't pull here. What is the length of our jackets? Women. Bolero length, waistline, main, main here, down here, all different lengths, right? We don't have a standard. You get what I'm saying? We don't have a standard. It has to do with your body type and proportion and where we want to go with that. Gentlemen, we do have a length particular, okay? I'm going to take my tape measure from under his collar. I'm starting under his collar. I'm going to come up with a measurement, and this one is 30 and a half inches. I want to see 30 and a half inches when I measure where this jacket ended to down here where the welt of his shoe is. So that's your perfect length, 30 and a half inches. So what? This equals what? And I'm going to where the welt of the shoe is. Do you know where the welt of the shoe is, where the heel and the leather meet in the back? Okay. So I'm saying what? This proportion should equal this proportion here for a gentleman. It doesn't matter if you're five foot two or six foot seven, this equals this. Now, Tony, you said I could touch you, yes? The main criteria, I want to see this proportion, but what I'm really looking for is, does it cover the buttocks? Okay, so I want to make sure I can touch his buttocks. All right, so this is, it's covering perfectly. He's got very good proportion here for, he's not long-waisted or short-waisted, everything is in place, okay. Also, if you're not long-waisted or short-waisted, do you see where the flap is on this jacket? I should feel your belt under there, and you're right about there. And you cannot shorten a jacket or lengthen the jacket. Do you notice how the pocket is off if you do that? You see, it's out of proportion. This is very proportioned, so you can't change this length at all, shorten it or lengthen it in any way. And you cannot make a two button, a three button, or vice versa. That, that's not possible, okay? So that doesn't work. Now, what is current? I'm going to take his shoulder seam, and I'm coming to the notch right here, yes? I'm going to put my tape measure here at the center seat, and I'm going to come to the notch. This is an older suit. It's about four and a half drop. What you want to have now is if you're between two and a half and three and a half inches from this shoulder seam measurement to this notch right here, it's between two and a half and three and a half, your suit is current. If it starts getting down here where this is at four and a half, five or whatever, your suit is old or outdated. Okay? If this measurement is less than two and a half, where it's one, one and a half, you are now wearing a high fashion suit. Got it? Okay. Here's why. If this is four and a half, this is going to be close to four, four and a half. See why? So why do we have that skinny tie? Because I told you that lapel is how wide? One inch. And you know where this notch is? It's up here at one inch. Got it? So this distance will be very close to this distance. Do you get what I mean? This measurement will be close to this measurement. Uh, two and a half to three and a half, you're okay. So run home and measure your jackets, and then if they're not, you're going out to buy something new. All right. Or I think um, Athes has brought in uh, the uh, Lynch collection. Yes, Lisa? Yeah. Where are they set up? Do you all hear that? The Mary Walker room, Root Hall? Okay. Yeah, okay. The which deli? The joint deli, okay. So they come in, and you can buy suits two, three, four hundred dollars, pretty good. And, and Minda and her staff are very good in, in the fitting you and getting your alterations right. 
Uh, they come in just for your program, don't they, Lisa? They, they set up from, the APIS does that. Okay, now, what else do I want to say? This is called piping and flapping. You're going to have a, a piping effect here, and then you have the flap. Now, I'm going to take five pounds off of him instantly. Now, when your eye comes down this side of the body, can you see that pocket? You see the flap, I mean? Give me some head nods. I can't tell. <laughs> Over here, does your eye just continue down? Yeah. Visually, he took five pounds off. No PT this week. Just tell him. Look at that. Visually, there's five pounds. It's gone right there. See that difference? Just gonna... Women, you feel hippie that day? Where are those flaps going? I'm, stuck on them in, I'm sticking them inside my pocket. You get it? They, then that takes the extra fabric off your waist. Okay. I'm missing something. We've got that. Uh, I think I have everything. So then the next thing with your suit, you're going to either have plain front pants or you're going to have pleated pants. Now, traditionally, a man's business suit always had pleats in the pants. Why? Our assumption was you were going to sit at your desk all day and work. And when we sit down, don't we all expand in this area? That's why you get all the wrinkles here, especially when you're driving in a car. And the tighter these are, the more they're going to wrinkle. All right. So pleats were put in to give you a comfort level. And today, you're going to see a lot of plain front pants. But if there are no pleats, there are no cuffs on them. Once you have pleats in the pants, you should put a cuff on them. That is the standardization that we use. Just stay there because I'm going to take a shoe so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, what your alterations person is going to say to you is, do you want a light break in your pants? Do you want a medium break? Or do you want a full break or a heavy break? I'm going to encourage you all to go for a heavy break or full. Because if you have the wrong dry cleaner and they shrunk your fabric, guess where the pants are going to go? If you gain five pounds, guess where this is going to go, okay? It just normally does that. So always go for the full break. Now, if you have no cuff, you can slant cut it. I can have it shorter where it just hits the top of the shoe and length and come back here where the heel and the leather is. You following me? I can slant cut it. Women, when you're having shoe uh, pants hem, and sometimes you want to wear flat, but sometimes you want to wear a heel, take both shoes so they can cut it somewhere in between. And sometimes that slant cut works a, a little bit better, too, uh, in that situation. Okay, so, but once we put a cuff on the man's pant, we're going to cut it horizontal. The bias of the fabric does not allow a slant cut. So you're always going to have a heavier break on the top of the shoe than uh, where, where we can control the break without, you know, when we can cut it shorter. Okay, let me check out and see what else we did. All right, very good. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to have somebody else come up, but before you go, Tony, I would like you to do something for me. I want you to take these suits down and we're going to start passing them around. I want you all to feel them, both male and female. I want you to feel the sleeve. And uh, what I'm going to tell you is that one of these suits is wool, and one of these suits is a synthetic, all right? And if you would grab the sleeve on each one of these for me and kind of confirm with me something. Now, remember, I'm asking you to confirm, so don't give me a hard time. Just <laughs> kind of confirm. All right, put that there in your hand. Now, could you confirm that the thickness feels about the same on these? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Would you say the surface is pretty close? Uh huh. Just lovely. Yeah, okay. How about weight wise? They feel pretty close? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to encourage you all to purchase wool suits, the males. Females, we don't really have to go because we turn our clothing over faster and we can use spray, all, all that stuff. But anyway, the beauty of wool is number one, it breathes. Oh, do me a favor while I'm talking. Scrunch it up in your hand, a ball, both of them. Scrunch them up and hold it. Okay, hold on until I tell you to let go. All right, the beauty of wool is it breathes. You know the hot, humid weather we're having? If you're wearing synthetic, what do you feel like you're wearing? Plastic wrap, okay. So wool breathes, resists wrinkling, resists staining, conforms to your body and drops body odor. Could you ask for a better fabric than that? No, okay, so that's why the, the beauty of wool.